Eagles baseball is presented by Academy Sports and Outdoors. It is gorgeous tonight in Kansas City. It's game two between the Royals and the Minnesota Twins. Hi, everyone. Welcome back to the ballpark with Rex Hudler. I'm Ryan Lefevre. Joel Goldberg and Jeff Montgomery are coming up. Royals had a bad time last night with Kyle Gibson. He was perhaps at his best this year. The Royals had four hits, all singles. Now they face Tommy Malone and HUD. When he gets into trouble, it's usually because of the long ball. And that's a good thing. We need some more power, there's no doubt about it. But right now, they got to hunt out that pitch up. Malone can't be as good as Gibson last night. And if he is, the Royals will have to find a way to make some adjustments to get the job done and score enough to win. And Tommy Malone has faced the Royals twice this year. Our AT&T U-verse Rewind. He has given up seven runs in his two starts against the Royals, five of those on home runs. Yeah, look at the swing by Alex. Just looking at that, that's how you hit that off speed. A changeup that he was able to, to not miss, and Moustakis didn't miss either. These pitches that are up, I guarantee you the Royals offense will be hungry because they haven't been seeing too many pitches up. And when they get them, don't miss them. Jeremy Guthrie in his last start got his 1,000th career strikeout as he struck out seven Oakland A's. He'll start tonight. Joel and Monty are next. Jordan third was hitting 304 with seven homers and 17 doubles for double A and triple A as he is called up. Christian Colon sent back down to the minors to try to get more everyday at bats. Dusty played for Wichita State, was drafted in the 28th round by Oakland, and finally gets his first ever call up to the big leagues. Now makes Shawnee, Kansas his home in the offseason. Married a girl from Wichita State, so this is home for him. And up in the big leagues, Monty, what will his role be? Well, it's going to be similar to Christian Colon's. Hopefully, he's going to have an opportunity to do something special. Hopefully, very quickly, get in a game 
first first game you want to get out of the way as soon as you possibly can. All right, the Royals offense trying to get things going as we see in our Academy Sports and Outdoor leaderboard. They'll need to do it against Tommy Malone, and he is really rolling in his last five starts. How does a struggling offense get things going against this guy? Well, I think especially against a, a crafty left-hander, you have to be very patient. You can't play into his hand, wait for mistakes, hunt those mistakes, and when he makes them, that's when you got to get them. Ned Yost talking this afternoon about the recent offensive woes. You know, we faced some pretty good pitching performances here the last couple of days. Um, you know, and um, you know, you can read into it a little bit too much when you're facing really good pitching because really good pitching will shut down good hitting. And oh, we also have beers at the K going on, and that right there, for those of you that like Boulevard, that's Jeremy Danner, a brewer from Boulevard, and he can throw that's something close to a strike. First pitch coming up next. Royals baseball is brought to you by AT&T U-verse high-speed internet. The U-verse revolves around you. Call 1-800-PICK-ATT. By your local Kansas City Chevy dealers. Come visit for great prices on all new 2015 Chevy vehicles. And by the Missouri Lottery. Every ticket you play gives back to schools across Missouri. So play it forward with the Missouri Lottery. Another big crowd here tonight. 37,196 here last night. The Royals are fourth in the American League in average home attendance, just a little bit over 33,000. Minnesota Twins here for four games, and typically their fans will have a pretty large contingent making the drive south, I 35 down to KC. Twins last night didn't do a lot on offense, but with their pitching, all they needed was two runs to take game one to nothing. And tonight, we'll face Jeremy Guthrie, who makes his 16th start of the year. Jeremy Guthrie is going to try to repeat his performance that he had in Oakland. It was very good. He was able to keep the ball down like Ned wants him to. Salvador Perez was really good in helping him direct him all of his pitches down fastball change up he cuts his fastball curveball he's got all the pitches but really the 92 to 94 mile hour fastball he has it with that two seamers really been effective for him especially early and then he goes to the secondary pitches Royals defensively tonight behind Jeremy Guthrie and 
Good to see Lorenzo Cain back out there for consecutive games. Ned Yost had been alternating Cain and Dyson, giving Cain a little time to let the hamstring heal. He looks, if he's not 100%, 85 to 90%. Yep, and he'll be tested tonight. Guthrie's a fly ball pitcher. And the, his big key is to keep the ball in the yard. Left-handed hitters have hit 10 home runs off of Guthrie this year. Righty's two. So do all he can to try to just keep the ball down. Use that defense like he tries to do. Brian Dozier is having a very good year. Numbers you wouldn't expect from a leadoff man and certainly a second baseman. 16 home runs, 40 RBIs. He leads the league with 44 extra base hits. And he drills the first pitch to left field, but Alex Gordon is there. So that outfield defense is tested right away. And Dozier is just one for his last 14 against the Royals. Guthrie will take that early count out. Dozier looking to ambush that first pitch. He has 11 career leadoff homers. Glad he missed that one. And now strike to Torrey Hunter. Torrey was one for four in last night's game. Three times he grounded out to Alcides Escobar at shortstop. And now he lines to Moustakis. So a couple of loud outs to begin the top of the first inning. Take them. Three pitches, two outs. Curveball stayed up. Hunter liked it. It's right in the middle of the plate. Had him played exactly right. Two down to Joe Maurer. Maurer. Had a couple of singles last night. He was two for four. Batting at just 265. Make that 266. They added a point to his average as he was walking from the on deck circle to home plate. <laughs> Better adding than subtracting. One and two. And the key off speed pitch. Now, some of those have been up a little bit, but Guthrie wants those to finish down below the knees. Trying to get that right first inning. It's a it's an easy time. Sometimes for pitchers through the first, but a lot of times they're trying to find their rhythm and find their location. Guthrie's last start against Minnesota, he tied a career high with six walks. Finished giving up three earned runs in five innings. And I remember in that start, especially in the early innings, he was not as aggressive as he usually is with his fastball, like on that last pitch to Maurer. A lot of curveball, sliders, changeups, and the Twins just weren't going for it, and they piled up the walks. You know, that's surprising for that many walks, only three runs allowed. So he did a pretty good job of coming back in counts, but two seam fastballs are good. Four seamers early, especially to get those hitters looking at that. And then Guthrie very effective with his change up and curve when they're working. Guthrie is nine and four in his career against Minnesota. Three and two on Maurer with Plouffe on deck. And Maurer is on with a walk. Guthrie hit a milestone in his last start on Sunday at Oakland. 1,000 career strikeouts. And in that same game, he struck out seven, which was by far a career high, or a, rather a season high. And that win helped the Royals finish off the Oakland A's for a three game sweep. And he stays with a fastball at 93 to Trevor Plouffe. Plouffe, four for 19. 
in his career against Guthrie. Now, Jeremy, we talked about the importance of him keeping the ball in the yard. He's 5 and 1 this year with a 3 2 8 when he keeps the ball in the yard, not getting, giving up any home runs. Trevor Plouffe, 0 for 2 last night with a walk and a sacrifice bunt. That was in the sixth inning, and it was his first of the year. On the ground, deep short. Escobar to second. Maurer is out. Maurer stays at second base for the time being, although Paul Molitor has not stepped out of the dugout. So it appears there will be no challenge. Good play by Escobar. Maurer slid a little too early. Slowed him down. He slides late. He's safe. Still lead Minnesota by three and a half games. The Royals have lost four straight. They have not lost five in a row this year. And that has really helped them as much as anything else. The Royals really haven't hit their stride for a long period of time, especially on offense. And yet they have avoided long losing streaks and remain 12 games above 500. Yeah, Jeff Montgomery and Joel were talking a little bit about that. I like Monty's commentary on. You know, last night we saw a couple of bunts and we saw Dyson come in to steal. I mean, sometimes when you go through periods like this as an offense and it happens to every team, you, you know, it would be nice to see the Royals kind of get back to their, their running and small ball mentality. 2 0 on Alcides Escobar. Hitless last night. You know, so much through the first part of the season, they didn't need any small ball. Everybody was hitting, you know, a runner at first base was a runner in scoring position for Ned. But at times, good pitching, like Ned said, is going to be able to shut down that, those offenses. That's when, you know, you go to that, that extra tank, that, that tank of speed. And moving them, getting them on, getting them over. And typical of this team, just saw a nice exchange there between Ned Yost and Eric Hosmer. He had Hardly ever can tell by the demeanor if the team is winning or losing. Three and two on Escobar. Is he doing a nice job here trying to milk that walk down? See if he gives him a fastball. Malone, he's got a, a fastball that's not overpowering. 86 to 88. He cuts the fastball in on righties. He sinks it away to lefties. He's aggressive inside typically to righties and away from lefties. Curveball and the changeup. He has given up eight home runs in 53 innings. Leadoff walk to Alcides Escobar. So right away Malone is pitching out of the stretch. 
He is not a big strikeout pitcher, so he relies on his defense, which has Aaron Hicks in center field next to Torrey Hunter with his nine gold gloves. Great career for Torrey Hunter. Both sides of the ball, too, defensively, offensively. Low to Mike Moustakis. Righties have done more damage, obviously. Easier to hit that ball coming in. Against lefties, he's had his way. Moose, not too shabby this year, though. Moose has done a pretty good job. 252. Four doubles, three homers. Mike Moustakis had a bunt single in the first inning last night. Putting an end to an 0 for 14 and then walked later in the game. Had some trouble against lefties in the last 10 games. He's going 2 and 8. Two of those lefties are Dallas Keuchel and Mike Montgomery who followed his shutout of the Royals with another shutout in his next start against San Diego. Got fire. That'll be out of play and may have cracked his bat. One ball and two strikes. It's interesting looking at those numbers. Tommy Malone, righties versus lefties. He has a really good changeup. And over the course of his career, he's been better against righties than lefties. He does not have a a knee buckling breaking ball but the twins first year pitching coach Neil Allen really stresses the changeup and he stresses righties using the changeup against righties and lefties using it against lefties throw it to both hitters you can see that curve there and that's a, that's a good philosophy it's worked Malone's going to change speeds he's going to add and subtract with his curveball Yeah, Dave Holtzman just looked the numbers up. Lefty said 100 points better against him last year than they have this year. They had 279 against him. So that's a big adjustment for Malone. That ball stayed inside, and after walking Escobar, Malone is 3 and 2 on Mustakis. Royals doing a nice job of waiting Malone out so far, first two hitters. Moose has homered off of Malone before. Three out of 15. One homer. On the ground right side, and Dozier fumbles. He's able to throw out Moustakis, who gets Escobar up to second base. And the Royals have a runner in scoring position with one out. As a member of the Oakland A's, Tommy Malone owned the Royals. He made four starts. His ERA was 1.84. But the Royals have owned him since he has become a member of the Minnesota Twins. He's made four starts, and his ERA is over eight. It's because they, the Royals are a contact-hitting team, and they thrive off of pitchers that are up in the zone, and, and that's been Malone, his problem. He's, he's a hard time with... Trying to keep his stuff down, but sometimes it relies on that that pitch up around the belt for fly balls. So both Malone and Guthrie, two starters tonight, are fly ball pitchers. Lorenzo Kane was one for four last night. Had a couple of good swings against Kyle Gibson, and that was saying something. Very few good swings against him last night. It's Kane hits it to shallow right. Hunter is there. Running from the sunlight into the shadows. Escobar back to second, two down. And 
Eric Hosmer comes to the plate. And we remind you, as you enjoy a cold one, to look forward to Miller time later in tonight's game, brought to you by Miller Lite. Eric Hosmer, first game back last night since Sunday in Oakland, was one for three. He had a bunt single. He also walked. 0 and 1. Been bothered by a sprained left ring finger. Last night he had those two fingers taped together, the middle and the ring finger. Osborne has a home run in his career against Malone. Got him conscious of the other way. That's where he wants to keep it on Haas. Kept that pitch down in a way to make mm -hmm. it 0-2. They use that cutter to righties. It's effective pitch when it's in off the plate a couple inches. And he'll also throw it away to lefties. Looks like a fastball, and then it kind of darts out. That's where Suzuki's setting up. Curveball in the dirt strikes him out. Malone gets around a leadoff walk. The Royals leave Escobar in scoring position. No score at the end of one. Tricked it. Top of the second inning. Big crowd here tonight. And you can enjoy one of a kind experiences at Coffin Stadium with the Royals Memories Program. A variety of on the field opportunities are available for purchase each game exclusively through the MLB.com ballpark app. Like playing catch on the field following a game. We will have fireworks after the game tonight and tomorrow night. You could enjoy fireworks with your family and friends on the field following tomorrow night's game if you get on top of this just simply download the ballpark app pick upgrades and select that experience oh man it'd be great to be on the field they're a great fireworks show here but I can, it can kind of feel these fans here wanting to see some fireworks before the real fireworks and that means some explosions off of the Royals bats Eddie Rosario last night had a double one for four Rosario like some players loves hitting at home he's a 346 hitter at home but only 198 on the road 
All of his four home runs have come at home, so he's one of those guys that, for some reason, and, and you know, hitters can't tell you why, but the numbers tell you he's much better back at Target Field. Still two and two. Jeremy Guthrie has had some trouble this year with left hand batters. And Minnesota will only have four of those in the lineup tonight. And none of them have more than four home runs. Good swing. That pitch was down and away, and he somehow hit it. Out into left center field, and Rosario is on with a leadoff double. Well, you better believe it. It's almost like he knew that was coming. Took a little bit of pause in his swing. He stepped, kept his hands back, and just went with it with both hands on the bat. You see, a lot of guys take their hand off the bat on a pitch that far away, but he was able to guide that in there. And you're so much more successful when you go with it and just try to stick it out there than trying to pull that pitch and it's a ground ball out. Nice swing. And now Miguel Sano who played his first big league game last night. And finished one for four with an infield single for his first big league hit. And then Shane Robinson ran for him and scored a run. One ball, one strike. Well, you know, he didn't exactly scald it, but he topped it. Moose came in, made a nice play on him. There's his family saying, hey, look, a hit's a hit no matter what, how hard you hit it. And you're not going to ask him to move the runner to try to hit the ball to right field. But he did. One hop to Rios. Rosario went through the stop sign, and he is safe. Gene Glenn, the Minnesota third base coach, appeared to be stopping Rosario at third, but he kept running. And Miguel Sano has his first big league RBI. Well, when you run the third base coach's stop sign, that's usually not good. Although, when you make it, it's okay. He got away with it. But Sano, with a nice job of looking for something that he could move the runner on, and then got the base hit. One nothing Minnesota now Sano at first to Kurt Suzuki. Suzuki had a sacrifice bun in last night's game. Yeah with a runner at first and one out. Yeah. <laughs> I went home and I cried all night. I was so touched by his sacrifice. Yeah. He, he was looking for more. Just didn't bun it where he wanted it. Gordon makes a play in left field. Sano back to first, one down. Time now for you to tweet your strongest fan photo. Use hashtag KC Data Strong Fan. KC Data Strong Fan, and you just might see yourself in an upcoming broadcast brought to you by T Mobile. One down to switch hitting Eduardo Escobar. Oh, nice. The other Escobar to Infante to Hosmer. Double play. So Rosario doubles. Sano picks up his first big league RBI. And to the bottom of the second inning, Minnesota leads 1 0. Got an early count. Two outs there.
Here's our University of Kansas Hospital injury report. Former Royal Carlos Beltran was placed on the disabled list today with a strained oblique. 380 career home runs for the former American League Rookie of the Year, Carlos Beltran, back in 1999. He's had a great career, and who knows what he would have done here, and yet he signed with the Yankees, and he has been mostly injured in his first two years with New York for a lot of money, at least a lot of money in Kansas City. So maybe it worked out for the best. Yep, the obliques are those delicate mid muscles, you know, right there in your core. Those those are tougher hitters. A lot of twisting and turning. Good changeup. Changeups away are really the pitch that Malone will go to against the righty. Cutters in, fastballs in, sets up the changeup away. A little bit like Vargas. There's a pitch up. Two and two on Kendry's Morales. Morales, Gordon, and Perez in the bottom of the second inning. Royals got a leadoff walk against Malone in the first, but Escobar was stranded at second base. Another three and two count from Tommy Malone. Change up down and away. That's his second strikeout. One down in the second. Same arm speed as the fastball. That's what makes that pitch so tough. And, and then when you put it down there like that, it just sometimes a, a right-handed hitter gets committed in his swing and he can't stop it. A strike to Alex Gordon. Two walks for Alex last night. He had five walks on the road trip. So that puts his on base percentage at 384. And now fastball at 90. And boy, if you start looking for that changeup, 82, 83 miles an hour, 90 probably feels more like 95. Sure does. But you know, Malone, there's a lot on the line for his start. Because somebody in that rotation is, is going to leave when Urban Santana makes his appearance against the Royals on Sunday. So that, that puts a lot of little extra pressure on Malone has already been to the minors. He's already been demoted once this year. And he's been really pitching well. Third strikeout. This one on a fastball. You get a strikeout against Hosmer in the first with a curveball. And strikeouts in this inning on a changeup and a fastball. That great spot down the way. When you're facing a team like the Royals that's been struggling offensively, that's an edited, an extra advantage for the starting pitcher. He's saying, all right, I'm going to try to keep these guys down. If I can hit my spots like that. I might have a chance to keep them in their little funk. One and one on Salvador Perez. One of Kyle Gibson's biggest outs last night was a strikeout of Salvador Perez in the fourth inning on one of his few mistake pitches with the bases loaded two down in the fourth Gibson was trying to go down and away with a breaking ball and he hung it up and in but it locked up Sal and he took it for a strike to end the inning fastball makes it two and two it was one of the few times last night where the Royals really put the heat on Gibson who was in control most of the night ended up with eight scoreless innings and seven strikeouts. Tied him up. Escobar fields throws inning over. 
At the end of two at Coffin Stadium, Malone and Minnesota lead 1 0. One nothing Minnesota top of the third inning another jam packed Coffin Stadium tonight. In fact let's call our fans the most trusted players or fans brought to you by the most trusted brand Honda our 26th crowd of 30,000 or more the Royals are fourth in the American League averaging just a little over 33,000 per home game and on pace to break the franchise record for attendance. Not too shabby for a quote unquote small market venue. It's been beautiful. Fans decked out in their royal blue, and I'll tell you who feeds off of that the most the players. The players are really pumped every time, especially you should have heard them talking about you can't wait to get home after that last long 10 game road trip. They were looking for the love here at the K. Now they're going to have to. You know, generate a little offense to get this crowd in the game. We heard bits of them last night in the first game back. The good roar, the electricity of this crowd. And they've been really good, especially their signs, you know, that they make for the players and they're tailgating, people coming early. I mean, the Royals, they're a very popular and fun team to watch. And they picked a great night. Very lucky it has been as cool as it is for July the 3rd. High temperature in the low 80s today. That little guy keeps photobombing. That away. <laughs> she don't want him photobombing. Look at her. She's. <laughs> Hicks to center field and Kane will run it down. It's <laughs> a good looking young man. Second time through Brian Dozier swung at the first pitch of the game and line to left. We mentioned how well the Royals have pitched him just one for his last 14 against the Royals. Dozier second in the league in doubles first in the league in run score and that's the ultimate goal of every leadoff man and. As we mentioned last night and tonight, he leads the league in extra base hits. 
Now the guys after him are players you would think of like Mike Trout Josh Donaldson Jason Kipnis Manny Machado J.D. Martinez Albert Pujols Joanna Cespedes Mark Teixeira all have fewer extra base hits than Brian Dozier which little roller out to Infante Good bare hand play two down. Ponte's really good coming in. Nice play. That was a tough one, too. Good runner. Let's bring in Joel. Well, Ryan, with Tory Hunter coming up, I learned a great story from Tory and Luke Hochaver. They've never played together, but they have a friendship that goes back quite a ways. In 2006, when Luke signed with the Royals after being drafted, he signed, and the day that he came to Kauffman Stadium, the Twins were here in town with Tory Hunter. And the Twins happened to be staying at the same hotel as the Hochaver family. Tory went up to Luke at the hotel, congratulated him, gave him some advice on his career, told him to always keep working, always keep smiling. And then one of Tory's friends said to Luke, don't forget your friendship dues. He said, friendship dues? And his friend says to him, yeah, you need to send $100 every year to Tory for being your friend. Well, Luke being the rookie says, well, I don't have $100. He had his mom pay it for him. Every year since then, he has sent him or given him when they faced each other a hundred dollar check that says friendship dues. He missed a couple of years because they didn't connect or DL or whatever situations. And Tori said, that's fine. I let him put it away, put it on layaway. And Tori showed me those checks. He's never cashed one of them. They just say friendship dues. He's even sent some in the mail. A great friendship for two guys that have never been teammates. Well, Tori hits 381 in his career against Luke. So. Maybe in one or two of those good years that Hunter had is when he didn't get the friendship dues. Must have been, but I, I thought the dues might be you, you have to throw him a cookie at the plate. But, you know, 100 bucks, that's pretty that's a pretty good story, Joel. That might stay in. To the screen, and Sal can get a drink of water while he's here if he wants to. <laughs> Somebody left a bottle of water on the signage board behind home plate. Sal makes the play. A couple of good defensive plays behind Guthrie in the top of the third. And Minnesota goes down one, two, three. One nothing Minnesota to the bottom of the third. Is it in that order? The young yeah. guy wants to be an announcer first, then a player, then a doctor. Yeah, I was trying to read that. I love the sign, young man, but I could tell you there's one key to getting all those goals: staying in school, going to college, and getting yourself a, a degree, and then then go from there. Look at him; he's just taking in all those words as you're speaking them to him. He was shaking his head. He yeah. knows. I'm sure his parents are telling him that too. Especially to be the first one and the third one. They've got to have that education. 
Alex Rios leads off against Tommy Malone. Grounds it just foul outside of third base. Rios was 0 for 3 last night against Kyle Gibson. And it was against Minnesota when Rios was hit on the hand by J.R. Graham, their rookie. And before that, it had been a very good spring training and first week of the regular season for Rios. So he not only broke a hand, but being out six weeks, he also lost some of his timing. Sure did. You know, he only has 39 at bats. This is his 40th against left handers this season. So that's not a, a, a very large amount of at bats. There's a good swing there. Nice and short to the ball. I'd like to see some more production out of him against lefties. Just 205. Lead off man on for the second time in three innings. Royals fans, come enjoy a night at the ballpark next Friday. The Royals begin a series with the Blue Jays. The first 5,000 fans through the gates receive a mystery gift card with great discounts to Rally House. And one lucky fan will win up to $1,000 to be redeemed at any Metro Rally House location. Gates are scheduled to open at 5.30. Get your tickets today at Royals.com or call 1-800-6-ROYALS. Omar Infante taking a shot at right field. Infante got the crowd stirred up in the bottom of the eighth inning last night with the Royals down 1-0. He singled, leading off against Gibson. That was the only time all night the Royals had the leadoff man on. That's how good Gibson was. Dyson came on and ran for Infante, and he stole second base. So he was in scoring position with nobody out, but Gibson buckled down and got out of the inning. Suzuki makes a great save to keep Rios at first base, one and one. Fonte has nine doubles against lefties this year. That's a nice stop, like you said. Nine doubles, that's second most against lefties behind Lorenzo Cain that has ten. So he's been able to find some gaps against left-handed pitchers and, and hit some balls down the line. Hoping that can happen here. It's just five RBIs against lefties. Caught at third by Plouffe. Infante went down and got a low pitch. One out. He hit that ball well. That, that, that might have been extra bases. Rios light on his feet. Freeze on the liner. That's what Rusty Koontz and all third base coaches and first base coaches tell you. There's less than two. Now, Cedis Escobar let off the bottom of the first inning with a walk. Well, that's that's a pretty good pickoff move. It's very deceptive. He will vary his hold in his hold time. Sometimes he'll come set and go right home, and other times he'll he'll hold for maybe two, three seconds. In on his hands, but he muscles it out into left field. Rios will stop at second base. And the Royals have runners at first and second with one out. Jam shot with one out. And that's that cutter in there that he likes to use. That was, you know, that's a good pitch, but Escobar was out in front of it a little bit, jammed him, but still is able to dump it in there. But the situation here is something that maybe Ned wants to look at as far as maybe moving the runners or something with one out. I was thinking that before he got that hit with Rios. You know, sometimes when your offense is, is stagnant, and I talked about it earlier, you're going to hit and run, maybe get some, get the runners moving, maybe try something. 
um, that can generate some offense when the bats have gone cold. Down and into Boustakis out on a ground ball to second base in the first inning. Rios at second base. Escobar at first. Foul tip. One and one. Everybody knows the key to scoring runs is guys getting big hits. And you got to get those hits when runners are in scoring position to win games. The last five games, the Royals are just three for 26. That's the bad news. The good news to that is that over the course of the season, the Royals are fourth in the league in that category. So it's in there. It's there. And now two and one to Moustakis. Sometimes, you know, it's, it's it's not just the big homer or the gapper. It can be a doinker, just like Escobar's hit. And, and get back to that frenzy style. They're not going to always be hot like that, but, but when they start, it seems like just one single sometimes will ignite the whole offense and we'll see them take off. Three and one. Malone wanted Moustakis to chase that pitch. Maybe jam him, get a little slow roller and a double play. Instead, Moustakis takes it to make it three and one. Last time the Royals faced Malone, Moustakis hit a home run. And now that looked like kind of an, a tweener, as they used to call it. Not his best fastball, not a changeup, but in between at 87 miles an hour. Three balls and two strikes and that recent slide you're talking about HUD the Royals have dropped down for most of the year the Royals have been first or second in the league hitting with runners in scoring position. Right here is a, is a good example shorten up the swing and just put it in play wherever it's pitched if it's close. On the ground to Dozier. And he gets the out at second base. Risky play. Don't know if it was worth the risk or not. But he gets the out. Cutting down Escobar. Now runners at first and third, two down. Well, it, it would work. It'll work if Lorenzo Kane gets a base hit here. To save a run. That was close. Gosher's a, a, a fine all-around player. And he's not afraid to get dirty. It's a good play, but is that the right play? Third inning, one run game with one out? I mean, I could see maybe with, with nobody out and you keep the double play in order. The only way you make that play is if you know 100% you could make it. And he, in his mind, said, hey, I can make that play. There's that cutter in on Kane. Ball was hit hard enough, and he's really good on, on his feet, but he got him you know, about a good foot or so. Okay. Lorenzo flied to right in the first inning. He has a home run against Malone this year. And he strokes it to left field, so it was a good play by Dozier. It scores one instead of two. Lorenzo Kane ties the game, driving in his 34th of the year. Maybe that's the hit that loosens the guys up. Well, let's hope so. This is a, a great hit because it was ball was exactly where Malone wanted. You could see his reaction. Malone was thinking, wow, how did he lift that? He wanted Lorenzo Cain to hit it to the shortstop and on the ground. And they'd have been out of the inning. But a nice job of reaching down, getting extension, and barreling it and lifting it. Two on, two out to Hosmer. Really good hitting by the Royals in this inning. The pitch to Rios was down, and he singled to center. The pitch to Infante was down, and he lined to third. And now Keane getting a pitch that was down 
near the lower edge of the strike zone and drives in a run. Osmer struck out on a curve in the first inning. Down in the count, no balls, two strikes. Haas to me looked like he's he's really been in pull mode since he's come back from Houston. And he, he wants to really air one out, but I think you know he's so good middle away, taking the ball to the opposite field. And against a guy who doesn't throw hard like Malone, really is hard to wait, but you want to try to wait as long as you can and then square it up in the middle. Fastball, one ball, two strikes. Specialty of the Royals this year. We've been talking about runners in scoring position with two outs. They are still the best. And that went up another point to 288 with Keynes base hit in this inning. Now Malone on the flip side of that has not done well this year with runners in scoring position and two outs. The league is hitting 321 against him. Stockis at second, Keane at first. Laid off the breaking ball this time. Three balls, two strikes. And last time, he swung it, not that exact pitch, but he swung it a slow, slow breaking ball. He fooled him. Oz don't want that to happen. And that was to end the inning back in the first. Beautiful ballpark filled with fans ready to get excited again. They like to see that first run across the plate, but they want more. They're greedy, They're hungry. Runners go, and it's grounded out to Dozier. And Dozier's play did end up saving a run. Lorenzo Keane with two outs drives in Alex Rios. And at the end of three, we are tied at one. Nice. Boy, it sure feels that way this year, doesn't it? It does. Packed houses every night. Way to go, sir. We agree with you. Fourth inning and a 1-1 tie. Here's our Toyota League leaders. Records for teams in the major leagues when they lead after four. And we have two of the top three teams playing here tonight. So for the Royals and for the Twins many times this year. Grind it out the first four innings and then just kind of play out the next five. 
Royals have only lost two games this year when they've led after four. And now we begin the fourth. Mauer hits one into his own dugout. Guthrie walked him with two outs in the first inning. To left field. And Alex makes the play on Mauer. You and I discussed this when we were in Minnesota in June. And Joe Mauer's career has dramatically changed since the Twins moved from the Metrodome to Target Field. And for the first couple of years, the explanation was well, the ball doesn't carry at Target Field like it did in the Metrodome. And there have been balls that Maurer has hit like that one that perhaps went off the wall or maybe out of the ballpark at the Metrodome or somewhere else but not at Target Field but it seems to me and I'm no expert on ball flight but he's hit a lot of balls like that on contact the balls hit hard and it just soars off the bat but instead of continuing to carry we see this a lot of target field just kind of flames out once it gets to the warning track. Yeah, you know, it's hard to explain that ball flight like you mentioned, but he, he, he is older now. He's not the same player that he was back then, even though the ballpark that he played in that in that launching pad that they played in the old Metrodome was conducive for home run hitters. You know, he's he's going to stay with his within himself and try to play and hit to his capabilities, which is the opposite field. He always has been. But this year, Tom Bernanski, the hitting coach, and Paul Molitor have been really been working with him inside trying to turn on the ball. And when we were in Minneapolis. He was hitting home runs in batting practice pulling them. So he's working on it. It's hard to change who you are. Trevor Plouffe grounded to Escobar which resulted in a force out to end the top of the first inning. Guthrie's run came in the second inning. Rosario doubled. Sano drove him in. And the Royals just scored in the bottom of the third on Kane's two out RBI. Strike three call. Fastball at 94, and that's Guthrie's first. I can see him staying with that two seamer. That's a good pitch. He did was down right where he wanted to locate it. And Poof's got to go. And now Rosario who had a good swing on a pitch down and away against Guthrie in the second inning and doubled to left center. There it is. Maybe Guthrie's found that two seam spot. That's that's a good location there. 93. Good fastball with a little bit of movement, but the location was, was perfect. And the ball that Rosario hit was a curveball that he was able to just go with. So Guthrie says, you know what? You hit my curveball nicely. I'm coming with the two seamer and seeing how you handle that. One and two on Rosario. And Guthrie, he He's a winner. He likes pitching here at the cave. Has a 188 ERA over four home starts since May 3rd, 20th. And so, you know, he's he loves pitching in this park. When you're a fly ball pitcher, how can you not? This is a huge yard out there. And when you have great athletes like the Royals do and out in the outfield, you're going to pitch to that contact, try to keep it down, but you know, you're not afraid to pitch to the middle of the field here. 410 straight away center field with a tall wall. Struck him out. Guthrie has retired the last eight, and right after the Royals tie the game at one, Guthrie gets the Twins quickly 
in the top of the fourth. Yeah, that keeps the momentum in the Royals dugout. We'll get him some more. Baseball is brought to you by Panera Bread. Avoid the lines. Order online with rapid pickup at delivery.panerabread.com. And by Menards. Save big money at Menards on all your home improvement needs. Statue of Mr. and Mrs. K. Out beyond Crown Vision in center field. The outfield experience. That ball's drilled to right field. Torrey Hunter is back. It is over his head. Kendrys Morales is at second base with nobody out. Third time in four innings, the Royals have had the leadoff man on. Oh, nice inside out swing for his 21st double. That leads the Royals in doubles for sure. And that makes the seventh. He's hit off a lefty. That ball is out of the middle of the plate and down, but a really nice approach. That's how you face a lefty. You want to think mentally opposite field. And, and you know, when you're a big, strong guy like Morales, you can do that and hit it over. They're hit. You don't have to find a gap. That's a really good inside out swing. Alex Gordon for the runner at second. Delayed call, but a strike called by Eric Cooper. Little, nice little toe tap. Gets his hands back. That's a nice little follow through and stayed inside it with his hands. Alex wants to pull that ball, move him over to third base if he can. 0 oh and 2. Malone struck him out with a fastball in the second inning. And then with two strikes now, he's on his own. But that swing there, Alex looked like he was looking to go in the left center field gap. He stayed inside that one. It's not a large sample size, but Alex has good numbers against Malone. One ball, two strikes. He has come to the plate 14 times against Malone and has reached base six times. Four hits, two walks. One of those hits is a home run. That was the last time the Royals faced Malone back here in Kansas City in April. Curve ball and tried to pull it to the right side and get Morales over to third. Still one and two. Situation calls for the pitcher and catcher to work away, work away, away, away if they can, because they don't want to Gordon to advance the runner. So he's going to throw his cutters and breaking balls that go on the outer half of the plate. Especially he's ahead in the count one and two.
slow curveball. So he took something off of the breaking ball. Morales is at second base with one out, four strikeouts for Malone. And, and this is a, a nice pitch. He's ahead in the count, like I said, he's going to try to get him out there. And that slow curve, it's worked a couple times. He's got Hosmer to swing on that for a strikeout, and now Gordon. Change up to Salvador Perez. Sal grounded is short in the second inning. One and one. Next series in is the Rays, Monday through Thursday. Tuesday is our next T-shirt Tuesday. The first 10,000 fans receive a shirt featuring HDH. The Royals bullpen trio of Herrera, Davis, and Holland presented by Sonic. The gates will open at 5.30 for the 7-10 game. Strike. Good cutter inside. Salvi recently we've been seeing a little bit of frustration from him. And largely because with the runner in scoring position, in his last 29 at bats, he's just gotten one hit. So he's been a little bit frustrated. And now, ahead in the count, like he had Gordon, he's going to expand the plate a little bit. He's going to make it wider, see if he can get him to swing off the plate. Breaking ball down, same pitch that struck out Gordon. We've also seen Sal at odds with the umpires lately. That's been his go to pitch now recently because he's getting guys to swing at it. So he's going to stay at it until they stop swinging at it. You got to lay off of that. You got to discipline yourself there. It's tough. It really is because you want to hit. Salvi's a very aggressive hitter. And he's just having a hard time laying off of those pitches that are out of the zone. Low to Alex Rios. He got a pitch. Down in the third inning and single to center and came around to score the Royals run on a keen base hit, which was down. So Malone, for the most part tonight, has kept the ball at the knees or below. Hold just foul. You know, the Royals, they're an aggressive offense. We know that. They don't walk a lot. And yet, one website fan graphs and it's a somewhat of a subjective statistic but the Royals swing at the second most pitches out of the strike zone in the major leagues only the Brewers who are in last place in the National League Central swing at more pitches out of the strike zone and there's one in the strike zone one ball and two strikes and the teams around the Royals Mentioned Milwaukee below them. A couple of teams just above them. The White Sox, they're in last place. The Phillies, they're in last place. And so yes, they're an aggressive team. You don't want to take that aggressiveness away from them, but at the same time, many times they can make it easier on the pitcher. We talked about expanding the strike zone with, with two strikes. You can really see the league. At least from up here in the booth, it seems like when they get ahead of the Royals, 0 and 1, that they really avoid the strike zone. And you know, why would you want to throw one out over the middle of the plate when you don't have to? So that's that's been what the pitchers do or they, their thought process when they face the Royals. Line to left and right at Rosario, it almost came in too far. So third time in four innings the Royals have the leadoff man on only one has scored and the Royals do not capitalize on Morales leadoff double.
Detroit. A couple of pieces of news from this. One is that Anibal Sanchez has a no-hitter going in the eighth inning, 99 pitches. And then much more concerning is Miguel Cabrera, as far as the Tigers are concerned, left this game with a left calf strain. He is expected to undergo an MRI. Guys, I had a chance to watch the play back. It was just a ball fouled off in an attempted hit and run. And Cabrera made it about four steps from first base to second base, pulled up lame, limped off the field, did not look very good. Neither does that. Unless you're a Twins fan, Miguel Sano hits it off the wall in left field, his first major league extra base hit. And he is two for two in his second big league game. He drove in Minnesota's run back in the second. Guthrie looked like he threw a changeup that stayed up a little bit. Nice swing. He didn't fool Sano on that one. He gets up underneath that a little bit more, and he had him. Uh, his first career homer. So it was a leadoff double. Alex, great throw. Well, the Royals had a leadoff double in the bottom of the fourth inning and did not turn that into a run. And now Minnesota has a leadoff double in the fifth. And this is Kurt Suzuki. Takes a strike across the knees. Guthrie got him to fly out to left field in the second inning. Ooh. On the other note from Joel, Anibal Sanchez would be going for his second career no hitter. He threw a no hitter as a rookie back in 06 with the Marlins, beating Arizona. He has also lost two no hitters in the ninth inning, one of them against Minnesota. A couple of years ago, Joe Maurer with a one out single spoiled no hit attempt by Anibal Sanchez. He now has one out in the eighth inning. Sanchez does, but he's thrown over 100 pitches. One and two on Suzuki. Wondering about how far away he is from a perfect game. Well, he's walked three. There you go. Hard to do, though. I'll tell you, it seems like hitters, they really bear down late in the game on a guy who's trying to no hit him. Still one and two on Suzuki. Hey, that's a guy who was trying to photobomb, right? Yeah. A couple of innings ago. Look at he Good hustle. Look at how far he went down to get that. <laughs> Way to go, young man. It's fine. Rios to the line near the side wall, and it's Ooh. off the wall. And then Rios wow. hits it hard. And where did, where did the ricochet hit him? Looked like a ball bounced off the wall and hit him. Could have got him in the head. I'm not sure where it got him, but that it definitely jarred him. Okay, was it his right wrist into the wall? Was it his foot in the base of the wall? Or where did the ricochet of the ball hit him? Well, it didn't hit him in the head because I couldn't tell on contact. Well, maybe it was the ball. The ricocheted ball, that is. Regardless, a great effort. And you know, outfielders, they all know when they're getting close to the wall, Rios wanted it to make this catch in the worst way. Well, now he's bending to the side, grabbing his left side. Just got word from Detroit that Ezekiel Carrera has hit a one-out single for Toronto. 
off of Anibal Sanchez with one out in the eighth inning. So no, no, no for Tiger right hander Anibal Sanchez. Kane's laughing. Ned Yost and Nick Kenny were smiling when they left the field. And that would lead you to assume at least one thing about what might have happened to Rios. Moustakis handles a sharply hit one hopper to get Suzuki. No advance for Sano and one down. Yep. Just got to kind of walk that one off. To know checking the outfield depth as Eduardo Escobar comes to the plate. A little bit outside, and then Perez hesitated before going back to Jeremy Guthrie. Maybe a little surprised that that wasn't called a strike. Escobar grounded into a 6 4 3 double play in the second inning. Third ball dips low, 2 0. <laughs> 2 and 1. Two years ago, Eduardo Escobar hit his first major league home run against Jeremy Guthrie. Most of his career, he has been known more for his bat than his glove. Two and two. He's done a pretty nice job this year, though, with Escobar with runners in scoring position, 288 average. You can see he's just trying to look at the whole field. He just wants to place it out there somewhere. That's what the Royals wanted to do. That's where Sal wanted it up. Trying to get Escobar to chase. He triggered. Three balls, two strikes. Number nine hitter Aaron Hicks is on deck. Sal giving him the high target. Escobar thought about it. Off the plate. Guthrie. Bare hands. Throws. Almost threw it away. Hosmer just saved a run. Very risky play there. Nice job by Hosmer to be able to stretch out in that big, long arm frame of his. He's able to save a run. That's a chopper right away. Guthrie says, I'm going to have to go to my bare hand and just shorten up my, my, my throwing stroke. And Hosmer saved a run, no doubt. So, you know, he Guthrie was like, whew, man. Yeah, a little exhale there. Close ball game, don't want to throw him a run. So first and third, one out, and now Aaron Hicks. Hicks slide out to center field in the third inning. Even though Guthrie's a fly ball pitcher, he has induced four ground ball double plays. What he's exactly what he's looking for here. And the left field. Alex gets behind it. And he will play it to second base. So Hicks gets just his third RBI in 29 games. And Minnesota takes a 2 1 lead. So the Twins turn their leadoff double into a run. 
Alex got behind it, but he knew how deep he was in left field and made sure to keep Escobar out of scoring position. Slider for a strike to Brian Dozier. He's had two tough luck at bats tonight. On the first pitch of the game, he lined to Gordon in left field. And then in the third, on a little check swing, almost ended up with an infield base hit, but Infante charged in and made a good play to throw him out. And now Guthrie's ahead, no balls, two strikes. Pop up. Royals continue to pitch Dozier well. He's just one for his last 16 against the Royals. But Minnesota retakes the lead. The most painful part of that inning was for Alex Rios. Certainly not Lorenzo Kane. Most outfielders don't wear protective cuffs. race and some friends of ours from our media dining room here catch up represented by Andy who is one of the quietest kindest hardest working guys you'll ever see at Poppin Stadium but boy he uh, speaking of being a hot dog I mean he was <laughs> he was egging the crowd on celebrating very early well, you know, showboating. Some of the quietest guys can be your most intense competitors. Now, John, our cook, who's an outstanding cook, he was relish. And uh, we'll try not to bring up his performance when we see him tomorrow. Yeah, but it was a great effort. You know, you give all you can. John's a little lagging behind the relish. Well, the Royals have had some chances tonight against Tommy Malone. They had the leadoff man on in the first, leadoff man on the third. Rios ended up scoring, and then they had a leadoff double in the fourth. But so far, just one run against Malone. The leadoff man on in the fifth. So Malone has been basically pitching out of the stretch all night. That's the fourth time in five innings the Royals have had the leadoff man on. They're trying to answer Minnesota. They just took the lead in the top of the fifth. And that's a ball that's right over the middle of the plate. Good, short, compact swing. Perfect swing by Infante. Head down on it. Reaching out. And 
taking it right back where it came from. Trevor Plouffe, third baseman, playing in on the grass, thinking Escobar could bunt. And really, if you're Escobar and you see something out over, go ahead and pull it by him. Got him in. Showing bunt and taking low. He also has a big hole on the right side with Mauer holding Infante and then Dozier's at double play depth. The Royals do not hit and run often. And yet they've got a pretty good combination right here. Escobar has the ability to go the other way. Not running and Escobar bunting again. He pushes it to the right side. He will get a sacrifice. Infante goes to second base with one out. He was bunting for a base hit. Trying to push it to the right side with Maurer holding it first. And not a bad idea. If he gets it a little bit closer to the line, he would have had a hit to go along with it. Even Infante in the scoring positions, not bad. And now Mike Moustakis. 0 for 2 with two ground outs to second base. Fastball is outside. His second ground ball to second base. We had a little discussion as to whether Dozier made the right play. He made a sliding play and then a close play at second to get Escobar. I thought it was a bit risky for that early in the game, but it ended up being a big play because Kane ended up driving in only one with his base hit. If Dozier had gone to first, there would have been two runners in scoring positions. That's probably the biggest play so far behind Malone. Dozier, he was set in his mind 100% that he could get the out, and that's why he did it, and it ended up paying off. Moose has been struggling a little bit with runners in scoring position, three for his last 26. And a ground ball to Dozier. For a third time, two down, and Infante goes to third. So let's see if Lorenzo Kane can duplicate what he did back in the third inning. He drove in Rios from third base with two outs. Now trying to drive in Infante from third base with two outs. Major League pitchers, they know that they can have a greater amount of success if they use the lower part of the strike zone. And as a hitter, when you got a guy consistently good that night, you have to be able to have the ability to lift that at times. Now you can hit him on the ground and find a hole, but watch this here. This is how, how you do that. that. Lorenzo Kane, that was a nice piece of hitting there on a ball down. Look where Suzuki is going to catch that ball close to the ground, but Lorenzo Kane, he's able to drop his back leg a little bit and he's able to barrel it and lift it. Down and away 2 0. Let's see if Malone will even give Kane the opportunity to drive and run. Lorenzo coming in a 341 hitter. That's the best average against left handers on the team. So 10 doubles, a couple homers. Having no trouble with left handed pitching. Ooh. Two balls, one strike. He'd like to have that one back. Mm -hmm. Just a little bit late on it. And that's what a guy can do who changes speed so well. He can make you late on a 90 mile an hour fastball. Tied him up, but that's out of play. So that's why hitters have to look for the fastball in, in, in every count. 
and then adjust to any of the off speed pitches for Malone. It's been his change up and his big slow curve that he's had success with. That slow curve is, has gotten three hitters. He struck him out. So Lorenzo will have to kind of watch for that one. Malone has three wild pitches so far this year. Full count. Hosmer's on deck. Well, you mentioned his good numbers against left hand pitching. Good numbers with a full count. I've always thought that was fascinating that the league average is just barely over 200 with the count. Three balls, two strikes. I'll be surprised if he gives him anything good to hit here. Line just foul. That's why that cutter in didn't quite get in enough, but just enough for Lorenzo to be out in front of it. Moving up on 90 pitches. Here comes that slow curve. Hold foul again. It stayed up. If he put that where he wanted it, it would have been down close to the ground. But you know, it's up like that, the hitter can get to it. So twice Kane has pulled the ball and hit the ball hard. So Suzuki and Malone are going to talk over the next 3 2 pitch. Hosmer's on deck. Hosmer has struck out and grounded to second. And that would set up a lefty lefty matchup. And we showed you early in the game how effective Malone has been this year against left hand batters. And I'm sure that conversation had something to do with it. Do you want, do you want Lorenzo Kane? Do you want to try to get him out, or we want to go with Hosmer? And that was Kane asking for time. Lorenzo hitting around 370 in his last 17 games. Slow curve. Hold foul. Still Malone with a, a nice curveball there. Didn't want to exactly save ball four on a pitch in the dirt, but he, he just put it in the lower part of the zone to see if he can get Lorenzo Kane to miss it. Really just using all, all four quadrants of the strike zone. He's doing a nice job. And the battle continues. That foul ball went in and out of the Minnesota radio booth. Dan Gladden usually wears a glove, doesn't he? He has a glove right, right there next to him. Dan Gladden on the left, Corey Provis on the right, Kyle Hammers, our engineer. Outside. So Kane earned that walk after a long battle with Malone. And it comes down to Malone and Hosmer. Pinch, pitch number 10. Lorenzo Kane, great plate appearance there. And that fastball in the outer half, that's tempting. And he's been fouling off some pitches, but he'll take the walk and see if Hosmer can take care of it with two outs. You know he's going to be trying to throw that slow curve to Haas away from him to see if he can get him to swing out of the strike zone. And it was that slow curve that got Hosmer for a strikeout in the first inning. Cut fastball in for strike one. So Hosmer is 0 for 2 tonight. 
and four out of 17 all time against Malone one of those hits is a home run. Line to left field right at Rosario. So he had the right idea, a good swing. Just bad luck. Mm. And Malone escapes the fifth. Two one Minnesota as we go to the sixth inning. This is the second game of an 11 game homestand farmland shows us what's cooking at the K. Fourth of July tomorrow a trucker cap giveaway and then fireworks family fun day Sunday will wrap up this series. A t-shirt Tuesday for game two with the Rays also student night on Wednesday and then Toronto next weekend buck night and fireworks on Friday Sunday another family fun day Sunday and a slugger magnet. Giveaway and then the All Star break. All Star break a week from Monday. Tory Hunter, Joe Maurer, Trevor Plouffe in the sixth inning. Hunter is 0 for 2. One of those outs, a line out to Mustakis. No swing. Royals dugout is not happy about that. Lance Barksdale is the first base umpire. Borderline. Shallow center field. Kane makes the play against his boyhood idol, and Hunter is 0 for 3. Well, he knew that was a ball down the middle. He would like to have done more with it. Guthrie using his fastball tonight a lot more. Mm -hmm. Like that. He's trying to keep it down on the edges. Great spot. He has walked only one, and that was against Maurer in the first inning. And we told you in the early innings that the last time Guthrie faced Minnesota, he walked six. Tying a career high. And he was more of a breaking ball pitcher in that game than a fastball pitcher. And a good fastball there makes it 0 2. Guthrie is shooting for back to back quality starts for the first time this year. Held the Oakland A's to two runs in six innings on Sunday. And now one run. In five and going to say two thirds, but the throw was high. Osmer went up and got it. 
The Royals are going to check with Bill Duplissy. As it stands right now, it's an error on Moustakis. And the Royals believe that Lance Barksdale was correct with his call at first. And this ball hopped up at the last minute. Moose with a great backhand. Just got under Hosmer showing off some great vertical there. And just coming down and hitting the bag with the tip of his toe. Well, that can be dangerous, twisting your ankle on that base when you jump so high. Great feel. And he, like on that angle there, didn't touch the base. Strike to Trevor Plouffe. He is 0 for 2. Wow, look at the athletic ability there. Man, oh man, that's some, that's some tremendous leaping ability. Moose just his sixth air. Pop up. And Fonte out. And Fonte makes a grab on Plouffe, two down. Extraordinary moments happen every night in baseball, but on one night, they all happen in one place. Don't miss the 86 All-Star Game. Coverage from Cincinnati begins at 6 o'clock Central Tuesday, July 14th on Fox. I believe Sunday night is when they'll have an announcement on the All-Star Game. Mm -hmm. Who's in and who's not. Voting concluded last night at midnight Eastern time. And Joel last inning shared with us that Miguel Cabrera left the game with a calf injury which as he put it did not look very good. So the all star game is just a week and a half away. So that could be a break for Eric Hosmer could be. Those calves, those things linger. They're almost like a hamstring. As far as trying to recover from those. Eddie Rosario has doubled and scored and struck out. Remember to vote for the Royals Player of the Month at RallyHouse.com and you'll be entered to win a majestic prize pack from Rally House. Prior to the game tonight, Mike Moustakis and Edinson Volquez were awarded their June Player and Pitcher of the Month awards. Still one and two on Rosario. Minnesota twice tonight has had the leadoff man on in both times that man scored. The Royals have had the leadoff man on in four of five innings. And so far only one of those has scored. Still one and two on Rosario. Rosario doubled in the second inning and scored. And waiting on deck Miguel Sano. He doubled and scored leading off the fifth inning. Struck him out last time with a fastball. Staying with it last three pitches all two seam and four seam fastballs. Rosario. Sending a lot of souvenirs to the fans up here at the cave. A lot of foul balls tonight. Slow breaking ball, 67 miles an hour out in no man's land, but Infante oh. was there and he dropped it. And I don't know how hard Maurer was going, but he holds at third base. So two errors in the inning. And Minnesota is still breathing in the top of the sixth inning with runners at first and third. Good pitch by Guthrie. He pulled out that pitch that he might throw maybe three times a season. 
and it looked like it was going to work. And Fonte, he looked and looked a little twisted. Bauer wasn't going exactly 100% on that, thinking that that was going to be a pop out. And Fonte looked like he had a pretty good beat on it. And at the last minute, he took his head or his eyes off it, and, and it hit in the dead spot of his glove and the heel. So breaks for both teams in this inning for Minnesota. A pair of base runners on airs and for the Royals Maurer slowing down between second and third. Right about there and then when he tried to crank it up again it was too late. Oh and two on Sano he drove in a run in the second inning his first big league RBI. And then doubled in the fifth and scored on a sack fly from Hicks. And right now, that's the difference. And on the 89th pitch from Guthrie, that was clocked at 95. Fastball up, struck him out, and he goes back to back at 95 miles an hour. So Minnesota essentially had five outs to work with in the top of the sixth inning. And they come up empty. There you go. No wonder he's using that fastball more. He's got some hair on it. You've got to go. No. In the bottom of the sixth inning, Kendry's Morales leads off our Sonic Slam inning. Our contestant is Archie Short from Belton. If the Royals hit a home run in this inning, Archie wins $700. If the Royals hit a grand slam out of the park, Archie wins 25 grand from Sonic and the Kansas City Royals. And Tommy Malone, oftentimes when he gets in trouble, it's because of the home run. We touched on that at the top of the show. Good change up. One ball, one strike. Malone has two starts against the Royals prior to tonight. The Royals scored seven runs in those two starts, five on home runs. Grounded out to Escobar. And he gets Morales. Kendrys is one for three. And Tommy Malone this year has allowed 22 runs. All season and 13 of those 22 runs are on home runs. Malone has walked two. He has struck out five, including Alex Gordon twice. Old foul and a breaking ball and on the topic of home runs and Tommy Malone back on April the 21st here at Coffin Stadium Alex Gordon 
hit a two run home run. Mike Moustakis hit a solo home run. Tommy Malone took a no decision in that game. Comes back with a fastball after the curve and it's 0 and 2. Pitching out Alex very tough tonight. Well strike out, outs on him and he's ahead 0 and 2 here. Could try that big slow curve. Stayed with a cutter outside. That was a beautiful swing that he hit on the homer. It's a change up and it was out over the middle of the plate but Alex did just a nice easy swing. Met it just right. Two and two. And this next pitch from Malone will be number 102 which would tie a season high and Minnesota is ready to go in the bullpen. Alex lays off the curve. So this next pitch will be a season high for Tommy Malone. That's Ryan Presley. Ready to go with. Right hand bats coming up after Alex Salvador Perez Alex Rios Omar Infante. To left field that's well hit Rosario is back and he's got it and then slams into the chain link. There's that good easy swing again Alex let the ball travel deep and put a really a nice pass on it and Rosario was able to use his speed. To make up the difference on the dead run. Using that fence to stop his momentum. Boy, yeah, it's amazing what that ball can do on a good, easy swing on contact, just meeting it. Ball jumped out there. Fouled away by Salvador Perez. Interesting matchup here if you. Go to DraftKings.com, enter promo code B Royal. Players to watch for tonight: these two guys, Salvador Perez and Tommy Malone. So far, Malone has gotten the best of Sal, and a little soft liner out to second puts an end to the bottom of the sixth inning. Royals go down in order. Malone helped by the play by Rosario in left field. Minnesota leads 2-1. By your Midwest Ford dealers. Visit your MidwestFordDealers.com. And by Academy Sports and Outdoors. Right stuff, low price every day. Packed house. Minnesota leading 2 1 as they come up in the top of the seventh inning. Jeremy Guthrie has gone six. 
He has thrown 90 pitches and given up two runs on just four hits. Both runs started with a leadoff double. Rosario in the second. He scored on a base hit from Sano. And then Sano doubled leading off the fifth and scored on a sack fly from Hicks. Kurt Suzuki is 0 for 2 so far and he pulls it foul to make it no balls and two strikes. Guthrie will get the lower third of the order here. Guthrie again having back to back good starts and using that fastball tonight more than we've seen it in a long time but good velocity. He's about 90 to 95 tonight. Two seamers got some good movement and the four seamers been tough up in the zone at 95. And then some change ups and curves. A few cutters. Guthrie last inning had to work around two errors. A rare two air inning for the Royals so he basically had to get five outs and did so without allowing Minnesota to score out into right field Rios is there one away in honor of Noah Wilson and his project to give fun band-aids to kids who are in the hospital Royals charities will be accepting fund band-aids donations starting tomorrow through Sunday. Collections will take place in the Royals charities headquarters on the main concourse across from the Royals team store or visit Noah's bandage project dot com. A two dollar donation buys a box of fun band-aids for kids. That's where you look. Vahe Gregorian of the Kansas City Star wrote a very touching story today about the special bond between Noah and Eric Hosmer. Eric had a tough time talking for that story. Noah was just seven. Inspired by our story, Hosmer made a good play, but Guthrie missed first base. Or so Lance Barksdale, first base umpire, says. And at least for now, it's an error on Guthrie. And a really nice play by Hosmer going over, showing those soft hands. And looks like he, from here, is a tough angle. Might have caught that corner. Escobar, he thought he saw Guthrie miss. And they're going to challenge it. Looked like I saw him hit the corner right there. Tough to see there. Tough angle. Guthrie looked like he was looking for the runner. This there angle. you go. You see the front of the foot come up? Yeah, looked like to me. He got yep. it. Is reacting as they see different versions of the replay. I think this is the one right here. Watch the end of his right foot. See how it bends backward? Yeah. It does not bend backward unless it's hit something. There you go. Now the crowd has finally seen that angle up on Crown Vision. Guthrie, a good athlete, well conditioned. Tough play, especially a ball like that that takes the first baseman into that hole. Oz having to throw it pretty sharp, and there is a, a, a better clear and defined here, re replay at, here in the stadium. Right, right in the scoreboard there. Now the headsets come off, and he is. Yep. So erase the air. The call is overturned. It is a 3-1 scoring play and two down in the seventh inning. Yeah. 
And now Hicks into shallow left. Alex Gordon in. He's got it. So three up, three down. Guthrie's done his part, allowing just two runs. Stretch time at Coffin Stadium. The Royals are down by one. around the league and Detroit just closed it out but big inning for Toronto they scored six in the eighth Soria closes it out Cleveland leading in a delay right now Baltimore trailing Chicago Tampa Bay and New York all tied up and delayed in the ninth our Mazda game break takes us to the south side of Chicago Jose Abreu this is career home run number 50 for him in just his second year and the White Sox will try to hang on to that lead here at the K, there will be fireworks afterwards and Boulevard Royals Live. Jeff Montgomery will break it down. We'll hear from Ned Yost and much more after the game, guys. Thank you, Joel. And this is Blaine Boyer, not Tommy Malone, pitching the bottom of the seventh inning. Alex Rios scored the Royals run back in the third. Boyer is a Chevy call to the bullpen, making his... 38th appearance 17 strikeouts and 36 in the third innings you brought this up last night. No. Oh. Dozier throws out Rios. Not a lot of strikeout pitchers in the Minnesota bullpen. Remember Royals fans the next time you're looking for great seats. Go to StubHub where there are no surprise fees at checkout. That's right on StubHub. The price you see is the price you pay every ticket every day. Plus with the StubHub app you can buy and sell Royals tickets anytime anywhere right from your smartphone. Another sinker baller Blaine Boyer veteran 90 to 93 with that sinker slider and a change. Got Rios to check his swing into an out. Didn't want Rios didn't want to do that. Happens sometimes. <laughs> Fastball makes it one and one. And Fonte. He is one for two with a single tonight. <laughs> Left center field. And Hicks glides over to make the play. Two down. Game three is tomorrow, and the Royals and Twins will be on the Fox Network.
Coverage begins at 6 o'clock. First pitch at 6.15. Aaron Goldsmith, who is also a broadcaster for the Seattle Mariners, will call the game tomorrow along with Burt Blylevin. And it features Joe Blanton pitching against Mike Pelfrey, the former Wichita State Shocker, who has a 3.81 ERA. That is tomorrow night. And then Sunday afternoon, we're back on Fox Sports Kansas City. There he is, reading up on Joe Blanton as we speak. I'll circle you, Bert. You'll be the main color commentator tomorrow for a Royals win. And the sinker baller gets two ground ball outs. Blaine Boyer has a 1-2-3 bottom of the seventh inning. So we're on to the eighth. Minnesota leads 2-1. Two one Minnesota to the top of the eighth and that's Jeremy Guthrie. He's going to stay out and face the twins fourth time through. Here are the sprint cuts of the game. Early Jeremy had him hit the ball right at him. Perfect. Take that little ground ball double play to go with that. Oh man that was really his fastball looked very crisp or it still looks he's in the game still that four seamer he was pumping it up there at 95 we saw several of those tonight strong and he's back in there again like Rhino said next pitch 100 Dozier fouls it back and out of play Guthrie's season high for pitches is 105 his season high for innings is seven in a third. This is the third time this year he has gone seven, at least seven. Still with good control. No balls and two strikes. Dozier's not happy with home plate umpire Eric Cooper. Not happy with the way he has swung the bat against the Royals lately. 0 for 3 tonight and now 1 for his last 16. One and two. The well, Minnesota Twins have scored four runs in the first two games of the series. They have won one, and they lead in game two in the eighth inning. High changeup. Two balls, two strikes. Guthrie will probably go as long as he's getting outs. Madsen is just standing on the mound 
in the left field bullpen. He is done warming up. He's just waiting for the call if it comes. So I would suspect that that means Guthrie will not pitch out of the stretch in this inning. Somebody gets on, Manson comes in. And the count from 0 and 2 to 3 and 2. Guthrie been able to stay in his mechanics all night. Popped up. And this time Sal runs out of room. Lands right on the stairs. Nice camera work, Swanee. Ron Swan, our high home cameraman, tracked that thing all the way down just below us. I thought it might bounce up here in the booth. Mm. If I could have had a chance. Guthrie wanting a strikeout. And he got it. Still throwing 94, and Dozier's frustration with the Royals continues. You have that kind of fuzz on your fastball, you know, you go ahead and use it. He's been strong with that. Now, this ball is just slightly above the belt, out over the plate. Dozier looked like he's trying to do a little too much, and that's what you do when you're struggling. You want to hit a 10 run homer. And when he does, it'll be the first time in Major League history. <laughs> that's right. Guthrie has given. Tory Hunter a bad time. Tory Hunter is 0 for 3. I would imagine Tory Hunter didn't spend a whole lot of time on video and scouting reports when it comes to facing Jeremy Guthrie because with his three at bats he has 55 career at bats against Guthrie. And that's it 53 at bats. It doesn't go any farther than that with plate appearances because Guthrie has never walked him. It's a ton of at bats against the guy. You're right. He didn't have to take one look at the video. Up the middle base hit didn't hit it very hard but guides it out into center field for a one out single and Ned Yost is out of the dugout. So Guthrie sets a season high with 110 pitches. He ties a season high with seven in the third innings. And for the first time this year has back to back quality starts. And with a sellout crowd here tonight. They will show their collective appreciation for him. Nice job.
seven and a third or longer. Jeremy Guthrie with one of his best starts of the year. Back to back quality starts. So he takes it to the eighth inning and gets one out. Remember, you can follow live Royals baseball with MLB.com at bat on your smartphone or tablet. Wherever you are, tune in for the MLB.tv game of the day, in game highlights, live look ins, replay reviews, radio broadcasts, and more. For more information, Go to Royals.com. Ryan Madsen appears in this series for the first time. He inherits one runner. Torrey Hunter at first base with one out and pitches to Joe Maurer, first to throw over to first. Yeah, Dave Island's got to be thrilled with Guthrie's outing. Last time Jeremy went eight strong innings was sep last year, September 13th. And I'm not surprised. He's a strong finisher. You know, late in the season, he's got a lot left on his tank. He takes really good care of himself. Finely conditioned pitcher. Season high, 110 pitches, and got the first out of the inning, striking out Dozier, and then Hunter hit a soft liner to center field for a single. And Ned Yost goes with a fresh arm. Joe Maurer has only faced Madsen once. Madsen, good fastball, excellent changeup. Occasional sliders. Two. And the fact that Maurer is 0 for 1 underlines what we were talking about the other night in Houston when Madsen appeared. That Ryan with great numbers and making the Royals as a non roster invitee. He said, man, it's, it's not as easy as the numbers would suggest. And he pointed to a lot of good hitters in this league who have never seen him before. So he's new to them. And usually, not all the time, but usually the advantage goes to the pitcher when there is no prior history. I think most hitters would tell you that too. There might be one or two. Over the years, I've asked a few guys, there's only one hitter that, that I asked that question to who has the advantage. We never faced a guy before. And it was Garrett Anderson. He said, I got the advantage. And I said, how come? He says, because I know what I can do and I'm going to look in my spot. I watched the guy on video and I know my strengths and I was like okay well, I'm not going to argue with it. So some believe that well, they have they have the advantage but not many. And it's hard to square up that ball especially when you know you watch all the video you want. And Maurer goes down with a fastball at 96 late. Perhaps sitting on that changeup, and Madsen, we discussed that in Houston, and he feels like now that the league is recognizing how good his changeup is, they're starting to sit on it, and it's hard to sit on a changeup when a guy's throwing 96. Yeah, and Maurer was late, and he had that pitch Maurer did in the back of his mind. When you get the kind of fastball that Madsen possesses, you can use that. And keep that hitter guessing and looking for the change. He's going to be in trouble most of the time. Rios jogs in from right field, and that is a scoreless top of the eighth inning. Six outs to go on offense. Royals have Mustakis, Kane, and Hosmer coming up in the bottom of the eighth, down by one.
wrapping up on Sunday. You will have a double header of sorts. First of all it's the Royals and Minnesota at 110 and then the 2015 FIFA Women's World Cup. The final is here and a rematch four years in the making Team USA and Japan coverage begins Sunday at 4 p.m. only on your local Fox station and streaming live on Fox Sports Go. Or you can join the free watch party hosted by Sporting KC in the living room at KC Power and Light starting at 5 p.m. on Sunday. So a doubleheader Royals baseball and then Women's World Cup. That's going to be a fun day. This is Casey Fien for the bottom of the eighth inning with the two, three, four hitters coming up for the Royals. Casey Fien is another sinker slider guy. Got a lot of those. 90 to 93 occasional change ups. He's had some shoulder problems this year. He's been on the disabled list twice with a bad shoulder. <laughs> Left center field Hicks and Rosario Hicks takes charge. And Moustakis is 0 for 4. Who's just underneath it? Had the right idea. Left-handers have hit 294 off of Casey Fiend. Righty's 207. Ground ball guy. There's a good idea. Minnesota, and it might have something to do with the knowledge of Kane having a sore hamstring, but they have been playing back at third the entire series. Trevor Plouffe, he's come in a few steps now, but notice a couple of times prior to this at bat that. He's been deeper than you see right there. Now he backs off a step. Up the middle and into center field. Kane is on for the third time. And the tying run is on with one out in the eighth inning. Kane seems to be the only Royals hitter able to handle those sinkers and guys that are pitching down low. He's just really, maybe that's why he's low Kane. He's been able to. Have no trouble with balls that are down out over the plate. He's finding holes. He's staying inside the ball. We saw his base hit earlier was a, a ball even lower than that. He hit over the shortstop's head, but able to lift it. Find a few more of those in this inning. Now Eric Hosmer. I wonder if that last swing by Hosmer got his swing back on track as he lined to left field in the fifth inning against Malone. And he's done well against Fiend. Three hits, two of those hits are for extra bases. Extra base hit here would score Kane, who's running. The pitch is down and away, and Kane swipes second base. Number 16. Excellent takeaway at first base there. He was able to get a good, good jump. Hosmer left it alone. And really no, no chance at all for, for Suzuki. Even a perfect throw in the bag, I don't believe would have gotten him. The time runs in scoring position with one out. And Hosmer rounds it up the middle. Kane goes to third and now two down. Kane has been bending at the waist with his hands on his knees ever since he stole second base. 
he and Trevor Plouffe have a little sideways grin with one another as Kane thought about dropping down a bun on Plouffe earlier in the inning. And now the Royals number one RBI man Kendry's Morales with 50. Sure is getting late. They are looking for any kind of way to get that run home. It doesn't matter. Low for ball one. Ray Holland getting ready for the top of the ninth inning. Hoping that he'll appear with the Royals in front. It's a fastball up at 93 for a strike one and one. Morales got more power from this side of the plate. Nine out of his ten homers are from the left side. That was a cookie. Got it by him. Outside two balls one strike. With 50 RBIs Morales is the first Royal since 2012 to have that many before the All Star break. And in 2012 it was the man that Morales replaced Billy Butler. Who represented the Royals in that year's All Star game. Out into shallow left. And the Royals tie the game as Morales drives in his 51st. the lousy single excellent job of of hitting and just finding a way to any way you can there's that sinker it's coming down it's on the inner half of the plate jams Morales but he had a good inside out swing if he tries to pull it it's going to be another ground ball out but he had a good approach keeping his hands inside of that baseball and dumping it right into left field perfect timing tie game Nice steal by Lorenzo Cain. Gerard Dyson in the pinch run. And speaking of Billy Butler, the man that Morales took over for at DH, this is where Dyson would come in. Billy Butler would get on in the later innings. Dyson would pinch run. Gerard for Omar Infante in the eighth inning last night. Pinch ran and stole second. That was with nobody out. And it's outside to Alex Gordon. Guarantee you right here this conversation is all about Alex Gordon saying we got a tie game here don't worry about that runner let him let him go he, he's going to steal and we can't do anything about it the crowd has woken. There goes Dyson and then he stopped and Alex hits it in the air into right center field and Hicks makes the play to end the inning but the Royals tie it Kane gets on steals a base Morales gets him home.
to say hello to a special Royals fan here tonight. That young lady with her chin on her hand is Alyssa Miller, a sophomore at Hill City High. She just finished first in state in the disc and second in the shot put. And the reason why we show her is her proud uncle is Phil Weller, our technical director. Also longtime cameraman for the Royals on TV. So he knew that Alyssa was going to be here tonight and wanted us to congratulate her. So absolutely, congratulations to Alyssa. All right. She's enjoying herself with her buddies. Ready to go. Greg Holland in a tie game. And the top of the ninth gets Eddie Rosario, Miguel Sano, and Kurt Suzuki. One and one on Rosario. Holland pitched last night and allowed a run, giving Minnesota some insurance in the top of the ninth inning. As it turned out, they didn't need that run, and they won 2 nothing. Two balls and one strike on Rosario. He doubled back in the second inning and scored Minnesota's first run. He is one for three. Jeremy Guthrie went seven and a third and gave up two runs. Ryan Madsen got the final two outs of the eighth. Good pitch. 94 at the knees over the outside. Two and two. Holland's fastball looks really crisp. It looks nice. And look, he doesn't have to throw 96, 97 miles an hour either. He's got really excellent stuff, and he's a tough competitor. Good mound presence. One of the best closers the Royals have ever had. And he knows how to get outs. And there's the first one of the inning. Slider in the dirt. Rosario is the first out of the inning. Good job of Salvi keeping it in front of him. Ball goes back to the screen. They have a chance to have a guy on base there. Now Miguel Sano. Holland, like a lot of closers, and in his case, an all-star closer, is at his best with the game on the line and in a save situation. Had a swing. No appeal. And at times, at his worst, in a non-save situation. And if you had to pick, you'd like to have it that way. But this is different. This is a non safe situation, but this is a win situation. The game is on the line. There just isn't a save on the line. This is a 2 2 game in the ninth inning. Sellout crowd. First place against second place. And a lot of times when a closer struggles in a non safe situation, you're talking about a 6 to 1 game. In a situation where he needs some work. Right. That is not the case tonight. And right on cue, he strikes out his second of the inning. Getting ahead with the fastball and finishing with the slider. He'll have occasional split fingers he'll mix in there, but you see him on the side of that ball, and it just drops straight down. Another slider that's not one of those lateral moving sliders. It has that downward break. Gravity ball. Royals bullpen tonight haven't done a lot of work thanks to Guthrie but so far they have faced four, retired four and struck out three. And now Kurt Suzuki very high at 94 miles an hour. If Minnesota fails to score the Royals most likely will see Ryan Presley on your left. If Minnesota does score they will see Glenn Perkins the closer who is perfect this year 26 out of 26 and save opportunities. Hope they don't have to see him. One and one on Suzuki. Suzuki was 
let's say awarded a sacrifice bunt last night against Holland. Otherwise 0 for 7 against Greg Holland. Out into right field. Rios is back. He's there. He's got it. So Holland does his job getting the game tied to the bottom of the ninth inning. So it'll be Presley the right hander with Perez Rios and Infante looking for the Royals first walk off of the year. Tonight's copyrighted telecast is presented by authority of the Kansas City Royals and may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form. And the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of the Kansas City Royals Baseball Corporation. Remember tomorrow the Royals are on the Fox Network. 615 first pitch. Aaron Goldsmith and Burt Blylevin will have the call. Royals hope the series is tied at one game apiece going into tomorrow night. Sellout crowd, many are standing as the Royals bat in the bottom of the ninth. Ryan Presley throws a pitch out of the strike zone and got Salvador Perez to chase it. Presley, another Twins pitcher who doesn't have a lot of strikeouts, but 21 strikeouts and 26 innings, so he's not all contact. This time Sal lays off the pitch down and away. One ball, one strike. Only two teams left in Major League Baseball that haven't had a walk-off. The Royals and the Yankees. Time to change that. Make the Yankees the only team. Sal is 0 for 3 tonight. Twice Presley has got him to hit on his terms reaching out over the plate. Sal is one for seven against his pitcher but that one hit was a home run. Presley 90 to 96 you just saw there that's the top he'll go that's pretty good. Uh, big curve. To go with it. And he pokes it into center field Hicks was deep and it's down for a base hit. So they were guarding against the extra base hit. And Sal pops one into center field, and the winning run is on. Time for a, a possible debut for a young Royals rookie. You can see Hicks way at the top of your screen. When Salvi hit that, he knew right away that was going to fall in. There's no chance Hicks could have gotten that.
Gerard Dyson has already appeared as a pinch runner. And HUD is referring to Dusty Coleman, who has just called up from AAA Omaha. There he is, the former Wichita State Shocker. He has a helmet in his hand. So perhaps waiting to see if Sal gets into scoring position. And he's ready to go. And the pitch is outside, 2-0 to Rios, who is one for three. Swung the bat well tonight. One for three with a single. He's also lined to left field. And if you're wondering about Rios and Presley, Alex is 0 for 2. And a slider. Looked like a strike. Was not received well by Suzuki. And I just crossed him up. Looked like it. But in the grid. Right. Too bad didn't get by him. Rounded pass proof. <laughs> Trevor Ploof playing on the line. That looked like a routine ground ball to third, but and here comes Dusty Coleman. But Minnesota has been deep in the outfield, guarding against the extra base hit, guarding the lines, guarding against the extra base hit. <laughs> that was great. The Salvador, he knew. The rookie was coming in and he he totally looked away and the rookie stopped and slowed down before he got to second base thinking does Salvi not want to go <laughs> that was now good that's that's respect right there right. You know? it is but <laughs> Salvi was messing with him that's good in a situation like this that he can still have that sense of humor nice piece of hitting by Alex Rios keep it keep the line moving drop that punt down move those guys over Question is, should Infante bunt? Because, boy, Minnesota, they are going all out for a force at third base. Corners are crashing. The two middle infielders are vacating. Yeah. I mean, any kind of ground ball past the mound, and Infante is going to be on. And Infante is a good fastball hitter. I mean, they, there's no way, unless there's a fluky line out, that Minnesota could turn a double play. Not too shallow. They are all out of position in the infield, thinking he's going to bunt for sure. And he bunts to Maurer, who tags out Infante. Boy, I tell you what, that ball looked like it had a chance to go foul. And I thought Maurer, getting it aggressively, was thinking for a play at third. I wonder if he wished he could do that again. He'd let it roll. Yeah. You know what? I got to tell you, that that's not easy to put that hard fastball like that. So Infante is able to execute a tough pitch, a hard fastball. That's what pitchers throw when it's a bunting situation. And he was able to direct it. And you're right, had he let that roll, it would have went foul anyway. But take it over, second and third, one out. Fans excited. They're gonna, they're gonna put Escobar on. Load him up. And give Moose Sox a chance to See if he can win it. He's going over the scouting report with Dale Swaim on Ryan Pless Presley. Mustakis is one for five against Presley. They also have Perkins in the bullpen. Or is thinking. that Thompson? Oh, that's Thompson warming up. He might want to go to the lefty here. He had Perkins warming up, but now it's the lefty Aaron Thompson, and yep, Paul Molitor's coming out. And he's going to make two changes here. Well, they're going to they're going to bring in. Tory Hunter not because Danny Santana is a better fielder than Tory Hunter Paul Molitor is going to bring in a fifth infielder so it's Santana for Hunter but Santana is probably not going to be in right and it's Thompson for Presley with the bases loaded one down bottom of the ninth inning tied at two.
Dusty Coleman with the chance of a thrill of a lifetime and a chance to score the winning run in his big league debut. Pinch running for Salvador Perez. Okay, there are the five infielders. Santana, who just came in, is in the shortstop position. He's second from the left. So you could have a 9-3 play here or a 9-2 play on a ground ball because the right fielder is playing it short. It's Kloof, Santana, Escobar, Dozier, Maurer left to right, and Aaron Thompson on the mound. Even though Perkins is a strong closer and the lefty, he's a fly ball pitcher. Aaron Thompson's a ground ball pitcher. He's a sinker cutter kind of guy. So he's got the right guy in there, and, and he brings the extra infielder in. He's hoping for that ground ball. Moose, anything just to dump it in out there. Just two outfielders in this large, huge, beautiful ballpark. In the dirt. One ball, one strike. Perez singled. Rio singled. Then Coleman came on for Salvador Perez. And Fonte put down the sacrifice bunt. And then Escobar was intentionally walked. One ball, one strike. One ball, two strikes. Moustakis is 0 for 2 against Thompson. Breaking ball, hit in the air. That is Hicks. Here comes Coleman. Oh, my. And he stopped. He stopped. What is he doing? He had it. Oh, my. If you're committed to go and you take off, it is all knees and elbows. And he hesitated. The bright lights might have gotten him. a few moments ago we didn't think we'd have a top of the 10th inning no now Jershley I'm sure was telling him right here as he went down you know go and once you decide to go see what happened was the rookie Coleman he's looking at the play and if you are going indeed your focus is scoring that run and where the throw ended up was on the first base side he would have been safe by a mile watch Jersey the third base coach he's going up to him he's saying something to him and you have his kind of speed and look where that throw was he would have been able to slide in there safely most likely but I don't know he had a little hesitation you never ever look at the play when you're focused on a winning run or any kind of run tagging up tough chance for the young man and the Royals 
So just kind of a a buzz here at the ballpark with people with their head on a swivel looking left and right trying to get the answer as to why that play happened the way that it did. Drew Butera is now catching as Coleman was running for Salvador Perez. So Butera is behind the plate. Gerard Dyson is the designated hitter. He ran for Kendrys Morales in the bottom of the eighth. Wade Davis will get Eduardo Escobar, Aaron Hicks, and Brian Dozier. Well, that play will be talked about. Not quite as much as the do you send Alex Gordon in game seven of the World Series, but for a win here against the Twins, oh, that's a tough one. High in the air to shallow right. And Rios takes care of Escobar. So to the top of the 10th inning. And extra innings are brought to you by Jack Lynx. Jack Lynx all summer long. Royals three and one in extra innings. Minnesota three and two. And here's Hicks. The the good fortune for Minnesota beyond Coleman stopping was that with the five man infield Paul Molitor was reduced to having his two outfielders play in the gaps. He had Rosario in left center field. He had Hicks in right center field and Mustak has hit the ball to right center field. If if Hicks had to go anywhere to his left or his right there really is no play. But it was hit right to Hicks, and maybe that led to Coleman being apprehensive coming down the line. And it wasn't a very long throw. Well, you're going to go with your third base coach, and you, you, you remember you, you got a rookie making his major league debut out there. So the nerves are on him. A trite situation like this on a play with two outfielders. He, he's already telling him, "Hey, look, you know, see the ball through the infield, or actually, you got to go. Bases are loaded." But he's Jersey when the ball went up he, he went over to him and most third base coaches will go up to him and they'll use both hands cup their hand and they'll yell you're tagging you're tagging now this is for a speedy guy this is a, a, a ball that with a game on the line you can make and had he not hesitated not once but he hesitated twice so you wonder if, if what Jersey told him was it tag 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 you're scoring you're scoring or what yeah, that will be the first question unless the Royals walk off. Almost could read Jersey's lips. See, he had him. He was he cupping his hands. He's making sure the kid could hear it. Coleman, he could hear it. And with a crowd like this, you really got to get up there on the hitter's ears and let him know what to do. Well, it, and this is his first big league game. I'm quite sure he has not played in front of 37 or 38,000 before so it's not as easy as it would be at Werner Park in Omaha to hear the third base coach yelling at you what to do. Foul ball. Butera really did a good job of positioning himself to get behind that ball and make a good throw to first and yet Eric Cooper signaled all the way foul ball but look at how he got himself in position to make it look like it was going to be a fair ball well, he knew that was an easy out he wanted to get to take it and he threw a ball about 90 miles an hour over to Hosmer as we continue to process that play I will say this in my opinion and the throw was offline but looking again where Hicks made that catch and how short of a throw it was if he made a perfect throw to the plate I think Coleman would have been out but it was wide I think he would have been safe you and I agree there with one out any ball in the air you got to go back to tag and, and you know if you're a young kid you want to score that run now watch if this throw is perfectly on line it's one long bounce 
So even though he stopped, I think that would have been a close play and an out of the play. So if he doesn't hear Mike Jersley, maybe he's just assuming that that was going to be a perfect one hop throw and didn't want to run into an out with Lorenzo Cain coming up. Mm. Who knows? I don't believe I've ever seen a major league debut with an outcome like that. So Minnesota gambling with a five man infield. Hoping that. Aaron Thompson against Mike Moustakis would get a ground ball. That's what Paul Molitor was hoping for. The Royals get a fly ball. And it's hit to. One of two outfielders in this spacious. Coffin Stadium outfield. Infante. Picks it off. Throws out Hicks two down. By the way, in the bottom of the 10th, the Royals have Kane, Hosmer, Dyson. If anybody gets on, Alex Gordon. Mm, Got a feel for Dusty Coleman. Outside to Brian Dozier, the only reliever warming up in the Minnesota bullpen right now is the starter Glenn Perkins. Although Aaron Thompson, who got the last two outs with that double play in the ninth inning, only threw a few pitches, so he could very well come back out for the bottom of the tenth. Wicked breaking ball makes it one and one on Dozier. Davis good power fastball a couple different varieties he cuts it and he four seams it 90 to 97 overhand curve two and one home plate umpire Eric Cooper in my opinion has done an excellent job tonight we haven't had to go wow where was that or any of that he's been really good. Now three and one on Dozier. Danny Santana, not Tory Hunter, is on deck. Santana replaced Hunter in the bottom of the ninth inning defensively. I don't think I could have imagined in a million years that I would ever see a baseball game where Torrey Hunter would be replaced defensively. <laughs> You're right. But it would take an odd scenario like that for him to come out in the middle of the game. And Santana, by the way, can play the outfield. Torrey's never played in the National League, so he, you know, he wouldn't know what a double switch was anyway. That almost what, kind of is what that looked like. Line to Moustakis. So let's see if the Royals can win it in the bottom of the 10th. Lorenzo Kane has driven in a run. He has scored a run. Followed by Eric Hosmer and Gerard Dyson, who had a big hit in Houston on Wednesday.
technically Danny Santana moves to center field. He came in to play on the infield when Paul Molitor went with five infielders. So he never went to the outfield, but he took over for a right fielder. And Aaron Thompson, who got the, the fly out in the double play in the bottom of the ninth inning, will pitch to Kane, Hosmer, Dyson, and if anybody gets on Gordon in the bottom of the tenth. Lorenzo's had a good night. He has had a good last two and a half weeks. Up the left field line. <laughs> Winning run at second base and nobody out. Boy, that's, that's I tell you what, that's clutch and what a night for Lorenzo Kane. Getting in there, being aggressive, thinking Thompson's going to come in there first pitch strike. He did. Ball was down. Lorenzo came and putting a clinic on how to hit a pitch down. He just dropped the head of that bat on that inside part of the plate and ripped it. And there's one guy in the ballpark tonight on an oxygen tank right now that's hoping for a Royals win. Osmer chase one down and out of the strike zone against Thompson. Royals have the leadoff man on for the sixth time in 10 innings. And only once prior to this did that leadoff man come around to score. That was Rios way back in the third inning. Osmer is one for one with two walks against Thompson. Thompson's never gotten him out. Trying to pull it and get Kane over to third. Lorenzo Kane tied the game in the third inning. He singled and stole a base and scored the tying run in the eighth inning. And now he's the potential winning run at second base with nobody out in the tenth inning. Down on a three pitch strikeout. One away in the tenth. Osmer really wanted to do the job there. Thompson, you got to give him some credit. He was executing some pitches down the zone and was able to get the job done. And if there's anybody wondering about Dusty Coleman and, and does he have what kind of speed does he have, I could tell by looking at him he could run, but. This kid has over 93 stolen bases in his minor league career. He can run. That's not going to put him in there like that if, if he doesn't have that kind of speed. So here's Dyson as the Royals DH. He pinch ran for Kendry's Morales after the Royals tied the game in the eighth. Morales got the hit with two outs. Dyson ran for him. This is Dyson's first at bat against Aaron Thompson. One ball, one strike. I mentioned Kane has been strong over his last two and a half weeks. How about Gerard Dyson? Has hit 467 in his last 15 games, driving in five. In the dirt, that'll get Kane to third. And let's see what Paul Molitor does here. Is he going to go with the five man infield again? And I was just looking at the wild pitches from Thompson. He has none this year until that one right there. Oh, good fortune for the Royals again. All the infielders are looking in that dugout. With their leader Paul Malter. Malter is just going to keep everything the way it is. Obviously with Gerard Dyson at the plate Mulder's got to be thinking well is he gonna squeeze and we haven't seen very few attempts from Ned Yost and the Royals in squeeze attempts but with the infield in the way Gerard Dyson hits and slashes 
I would I would be surprised if they try to squeeze bunt. Gerard has a, a you know good level swing. He's been swinging a great bat the last few weeks. Outfield shallow, letting him swing. And the squeeze was on, <laughs> but there was no one covering third base, which that's not a bad play right there because with the infield in, if Dyson shows bunt, Plouffe has to come in. Yeah, and, and you know the fact that. Kane knew that Poop was coming in and also was looking at the shortstop Escobar. He knew that he could put the brakes back on, so it was more of a safety type of squeeze. It wasn't a crash and burn, I'm coming all the way. Lorenzo Kane able to put the brakes on. Little tap. Kane to the plate. He is safe. The fans go crazy, but wait just a minute. Minnesota is going to challenge, so we may have a huge deflating moment here at Coffin Stadium or a second celebration. Lorenzo hesitated at at the very first and a great slide going all the way outside trying to get that hand on the plate and it looks like he game might over have. game over at least from that angle Suzuki didn't argue it crowd is reacting as they have seen one replay the Royals bullpen begins to jog in they're convinced and now the twins begin to walk off the field. How about the drama in this one? Hand on the plate right there. And I don't see clear and convincing evidence of any contact. But a very important play, so they're going to take their time. Royals win. Two celebrations for one. The Royals' four game losing streak is over. And Dusty Coleman can go back to breathing. Oh, so happy that the Royals were able to get out of their losing streak, number one, but also number two, that that young man doesn't have to live with that. Two Royals catchers already getting into position. We'll uh, we'll give them a little more time. We could go down to Joel right now, but we're trying to help Salvador. Well, they don't need the help. They're waiting for us. Let's go down to Joel. All right, Ryan. Thank you very much. Joined by Gerard Dyson, first walk off of the year, and you had to wait a few more seconds for it. And we're going to bring over with Gerard Dyson, Lorenzo Cain. You ever seen a finish like that, Gerard? No, they got it. Anyway, I think you were saying, or I was asking, ever seen a finish like that? Not at all, but uh, it was a great fan. I'm just glad we got the win in front of the home team. The electricity here in front of this sold out crowd is unbelievable. And then to have to wait for the celebration, how unique was that moment? You guys knew it was over though, right? Yeah, you know, Kane did a great job leading off with a double. And uh, he got the third on the pass ball. And right there, I came up. I was just thinking of putting it in play. 
and let them show, show the world that's what speed do. Lorenzo, come on in here. Let, let's let him catch his breath for a minute. No, you're okay. <laughs> you can stay, Gerard. We'll, we'll talk to both of you, but I don't know. Have you caught your breath yet? Yeah, it's, it's, it's coming back. <laughs> <laughs> Take us through that final play. Were you sure you were safe? Yeah, I was just going on contact there. Uh, Dyson did a good job of uh, putting the ball in play and uh, just try to make a good slide. And uh, like I say, we got to walk off win. So you know with Gerard, you put that ball in play, there's a, there's a good chance that it's coming. What are the emotions like as you're running home and you're seeing the potential to win this thing? I'm just thinking about getting home play, you know, any way possible. And uh, I say, just had to make a great slide and uh, I was able to do that. So uh, definitely happy we got to win. It's been a little bit of a struggle this week to be able to come out of this one and heartbreaking in the ninth inning to come back in the tenth. How big is this for this team back up four and a half games? It's huge. You know, we've definitely been struggling uh, scoring runs as of late. But uh, like I say, home crowd stuck with us, continue to support us. And uh, like I say, we just find a way to get a win tonight. And yeah, we'll let you two guys have the final word here to this crowd of 38,868. Here, take the mic, Gerard. <laughs> okay. I just want to say, that's what speed do. <laughs> that's it. Gerard Dyson and Lorenzo Kane. Let's go back upstairs to you guys. What a memorable finish. Well, you're right, Joel. What a game for Lorenzo Kane, by the way. Miller time brought to you by Miller Lite. Lorenzo Kane tied the game with an RBI in the third. Tied the game with a base hit, stolen base, and run scored in the eighth. And then after that heartbreaking finish to the bottom of the ninth, Hud, it was his double leading off the tenth that set up the game-winning run. He's been hot for a week and a half now. He's been the one of the only Royals hitters that's able to handle that low pitch, it seems like to me. But finding the, the, the outfield grass here, staying up the middle, getting on base, doubles. Lorenzo driving the bus. Royals even the series in 10 innings. We'll be right back.